Because there's more than just cruelty in this world. Because Mikasa is a good person with a good heart. It's getting through, I think. And then Aaron walks in. That's someone that he knows. With the gun fully loaded. It's crazy. It's such a powerful conversation between Gabby and Armin and Mikasa. Just because there are a lot of things going on for Gabby. There are a lot of emotions coming through. But one of them that is very clear to me is like that intense feeling of guilt. She may not even be fully aware of it yet or fully conscious of it. But I know those situations where I've done something wrong. And like, I don't even fully feel it yet, but I know it's coming. And somehow that's that's the most terrible sensation. And it's weird because in those situations, you look around for something to balance the scales. I don't know what that instinct is exactly. I can't fully explain it, but it's something that I, I, I feel. Maybe it's something like you're looking to pay penance. Like you immediately know that the sensation of realizing that you've done wrong is going to be tremendously horrible and, and long lasting. And so you're frantically hoping that in that moment, one big thing will happen to, to balance it out and not force you to endure this horrible vision of yourself for like an eternity. You know what I mean? From that place, you know, fully realizing you've done wrong, especially the wrong Gabby's done. The easiest thing for her would be like the scouts hurt her and punish her and everything sort of goes back to normal and on track. The world is as she expects right they are the enemy etc but she's not going to get it and that's both the the greatness of it for her but looking at it from her eyes the tragedy savagery we had a such a wonderful episode last time with mr browse that they can't let that go unpunished no good deed goes unpunished i was wrong to hope please forgive me she's <laughs> I want to talk, but, you know, if it doesn't go my way, I got this hand. We all could use a little more talking. There's a lot to this story I still don't know, obviously. He's not unfeeling. He's not unthinking. Oh, oh, are you? In that sense, I agree with Eren, and I don't agree with Mikasa. I don't think he's being manipulated. It's not mutually exclusive. He might be doing this because he thinks this is what will help them the most. The truth is, I just, we just don't really know at this point, I guess. What? Yeah, it is a little bit interesting that he suddenly likes Annie. Bertolt's crush. I've mentioned it before, but it hasn't been at the forefront of my mind recently. At this point, they seem to be like some amalgamation of all the people they've eaten. And it's hard to know to what extent that's taken effect. It's sort of difficult right now to talk about Aaron's choices or other choices or what other things he could have done without the full picture. You know, there's still a lot of things that I don't know. And also a lot of the characters don't know. I do think that Aaron genuinely believes this is for the greater good. I do think he cares about his comrades. I think that's been made very clear. I don't think he's unfeeling and is okay with all the things he's doing. I don't think he's free. <laughs> free is not a way I would describe this. He seems possessed. And it doesn't necessarily have to be possession by people with whom he shares memories. I mean, he's possessed by himself, like he always has been. But whatever the case may be, and no matter how clear the circumstances may be to him, I think there are certain things that feel wrong. You know, and one of them would be, like, sacrificing Armin and Mikasa, which I think he definitely is willing to do, even if he would be devastated by that. Like, he seems to have made a choice that he's going to suffer for what he feels is right, which raises a lot of questions about, like, one, whether or not he can actually affect the plan in the way he thinks he can, which, you know, maybe in the show he can, but in real life that's very, very difficult to swallow. And that the cost of that won't be greater somehow than the, the benefit of the result, you know what I mean? <laughs> エレン、あなたは。ミカサお前もだ。はあ?いや。死に直面する極限状態の中で俺の命令を聞いた。戦えと。Right, <笑> 本来の自分が宿の死の声を強いられることに抵抗を覚えることで生じるらしいが Wait, so he's saying that, like, he activated her, right? And so she isn't free? <laughs> Is that what's going on? Like, she has to do what he says? And then all these feelings are just, like, her latent abilities? She obviously doesn't feel that way, but then again, like, how do you know how that would manifest? It could manifest as feelings, right? Like, in a way, our own feelings for things, our drive to do certain things, or our obsessions or whatever, have explanations, but... 
are probably like rooted to something biological that's in DNA. You know what I'm saying? Like falling in love, for example, you know, like you do all sorts of crazy, ridiculous things and you directly experience those feelings and you can form a rational basis for why you have those feelings. But going back to what I said a couple episodes ago, it often feels like emotions follow the thoughts, but a lot of the time those emotions just arise spontaneously from just how we're built and everything else, all the explanations, all the thoughts behind them, they come later. So Picasso would have no real way of knowing. Maybe that dream was her, her real self. Trying to get her off the path of the, the errand control. What a person to be dictated by, though. Oh, this is terrible. You better not say Mikasa. This sucks. Oh no. Oh no. Well, I sort of believe him in that one. <laughs> He's been pushing her away this whole time. Damn it, it sucks so bad. Because, like, it doesn't matter really what the origins of Mikasa's feelings are. She has them. And she knows this, right? Like, she she's known this. You know when people are pushing you away and rejecting you. You feel it in your core. But all this buildup after all these years, to have the person you care about say that to your face so coldly, walking in with his hand cut, ready to basically kill you. In some weird way, he's doing her a favor. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes it just... You need the big hurt. It would be way worse for Mikasa if she just, like, lived like this forever. That being said, I don't think that Eren has no regard for her whatsoever. I, I think there's a lot of things mixed in. One of those things, I think, is disgust. Sadly, disgust is kind of a natural reaction to people who throw themselves at your feet. You know, and like, don't value themselves. There's just weird triggers to that because the person's not them themselves. They're not exhibiting the good qualities that they have by being at your mercy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Tell him, Armin. Wow, Mikasa stopped that? Did you even attend to do that? Well, this actually gives like a like a lore explanation for that whole thing. Why she's so intense. It's definitely not all she is though. Even getting punched is emotionless. Is this the savagery? Because I'm already sad. <laughs> this is too much savage for savagery for me already. And it's just a conversation between friends, former friends. Have I told you about my friend Armin? He's the best. He knows all about the sea and he can really take a punch. <laughs> oh no, and it's like so bad thinking about how Armin was bullied. <laughs> they used to defend him. And Mikasa didn't step in for Armin. No! I mean, he, he has a point. Nearby,take Oh wow, I didn't realize it had been that long. Pixis no hentona do de aro to yatsu kiru. Can't then buso no heishing a sanjume. Konomorio wekaraka. Don't count them out. Don't underestimate them. Sorega ha meshta stende. Hitojini teashio tsketoku. Does he even deserve to have limbs? Elbi. Ano hino chikayo. Yo yaku hata se soda. Yeah, we're, we're here because. Oh my, that's no Levi didn't kill Zeke when he could have. Oh, I'm so worried about Levi though, because. Wait, what? What? What is going on? What? Where are you going? Why are you running? <laughs> How many people have been drinking the wine or breathing the gas or what? Oh no, oh no. I'm glad Levi didn't get whatever that was. <laughs> That's actually pretty genius. Exporting Zeke spinal fluid wine. Well done. Well played. How many people drank this? Oh no, Pixis definitely would drink it, wouldn't he? They just, they just won, didn't they? Thank you. He got some too. I mean, he can escape, no? Oh no, Levi's heart! Oh no. They got him, they got him so good. His kindness! <laughs> too much kindness! Since always, it was all a lie. What, do they get an extra boost? He doesn't have to kill to fight. Just get out of there. 
No, 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 no. Don't make that face. Get out of there. Get out of the forest, you idiot. <laughs> this was exactly my fear for Levi. No, I don't care. All this talk about having no choice. Bullcrap. Levi's more of a man and what he just did right there, trying not to kill his comrades even though nobody would hold him accountable for that, than Zeke will, will ever have. Like, no matter how things turn out, Levi is the hero in this scenario. Where Levi is not complete yet, you know, where his arc is not complete. And I hope it will complete because I know he's not dead. He has to come to some realization about this because right now he's paralyzed. This compassion he has is a great thing, but it's not something that exists in a harmonious state. It's a paralyzing force for him instead of something that gives him strength. Zeke has clearly won this round and maybe this is the final round, you know, but that's not everything. You know, that's not the whole picture, even though it definitely seems that way sometimes. For me, the, the contrast between them is so clear. Like Levi is losing right now. You know, a lot of them are losing because of their good qualities. But I think it's a mistake to say that that's the full assessment and that because they're losing, that means their choices are wrong. You know what I'm saying? They are fighting a more difficult battle. They're fighting the battle of like eliminating personal arrogance, respecting life, having something like a conscience. And so they're at a disadvantage. And I would argue that's part of what makes it heroic. If it's something that they are in command of, that's the part that's missing for me. But that being said, man, do I want Levi to win. <laughs> I feel like there's a chance we might be inviting here too. Aaron could turn on him. Yes, there he is. Yes, he's yeah, terrified for good reason. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's so funny, man. It's so funny because usually I I feel for a bunch of the characters at once, and so I don't wish for any of them to die. And my feeling with action scenes is usually like, oh no, there's no way to win this. For some reason, the Levi Zeke scenes, I, I always am able to suspend that, and I just want Levi to kick his ass. Why? What is that? You messed up, Zeke. <laughs> you messed up. I hope, but he's probably learned his lesson. At least he respects Levi a lot more now. He killed them. And you know that hurts him so bad, too. <laughs> there you go. Feels like he has some conviction now, at least. <laughs> I love that his voice is coming from everywhere. Damn. Oh wow, well he's still alive. Not looking so hot. Lost his abs. Here we are again. <laughs> yes, yes, I love it. I live for these Levi Zeke fights. It's so great. My beloved Erwin is gone and things have fallen to pieces in his absence. But what I really want to believe about good people, you know, good, strong, heroic people who do great things. And this is a selfish belief. It's just something that I, you know, I want to believe is that the actions of those people ripple out by affecting others around them and inspiring others to be similar or the same or embody some of those same qualities. And in that sense, that maybe idealism is pragmatic. This is all Levi, right? Like Levi making the choices, but Levi largely is who he is because of Erwin's influence. And Erwin is who he is because of just Erwin, but also because of his father's influence and being motivated by the people who sacrificed for him and, and et cetera, et cetera. And to me watching the show, although this is, I guess somewhat controversial, Erwin represents someone who completed an arc that rises above the cruelty and above the chaos and is in many ways a solution to the problems posed by the show. As is, funnily enough, Sasha's father. So for me, whatever the circumstances are, win or lose, whatever practicalities I'm not understanding, I respect those qualities so much and I respect the will to, like, not lose yourself in, in this world and to care about things, you know, to actually care in a way that you can't just take the easy route. And to me, it seems like Zeke is in many ways not that or even the opposite of that. And so their clashing is so exciting. And then of course, Levi's just the ultimate badass. That, that doesn't hurt either. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. Shad is still at it. Looks like they are not as motivated. Aren't you gonna headbutt someone? Headbutt them into shape, Shadis. Oh no. <laughs> Seems like Shadis is not, not so special anymore. He knows. I mean, to be fair, Aaron does make a lot of tough decisions. 
ヘッドバットシャレス。このヘドンシブは我々が占拠しました。ヘッドバットシャレス。とか言われている我々が。ホッキーとサムティングリースペシャルライトヲー。サムラのような小便小僧など。There you go. There you go. So I'm not the the biggest fan of the Yeagerist movement, but it's not like there's nothing to this. I mean, yeah, like, we should be updating the practices a little bit. No, things definitely have changed. How many wild titans are roaming the island now? But I guess that's not really the point. The point is their their motivations, their alliances have shifted dramatically as well. Loading headbutt. <laughs> or not. Stop using that phrase. <laughs> This is unnecessary. I'm disappointed in you, Flish Flush. <laughs> There's some redemption for him. This is not what I wanted, though. See, again, like for me, at least he stood up for what he believed in. There's different things happening at the same time, you know what I mean? I'm having difficulty articulating this, but there's like the events and the results. But that's not everything. There's who you are as well. And I respect the hell out of Shadis for standing up. I mean, it was not the wisest decision, but by speaking out, by not backing down, he has something of value in himself, even though he got the crap beaten out of him. And actually, I feel like that's very special. Forget, like, being born special. Everyone knows that. Everyone has that. But, like, what do you do with it? You know, what do you do with your life? What decisions do you make? Do you make the right decisions even though they're difficult? Do you stand up for what you believe in? Do you try to speak the truth? Do you try not to do any wrong? Do you see others as having equal humanity as yourself? And amazingly, despite how terrible things are going, I feel like this sentiment is kind of rising in this show, especially after last episode. Like, it's there, and those people can win. You can have those values and try to win. It's not one or the other. Ideally, you have both. But even if they don't, you know, they have something. They already have something of value. I don't know if you want to go there right now. He looks like Rob Race Titan. Yeah, he has a valid reason for this, but he's definitely enjoying it too. He still managed to play baseball though, unfortunately. The hero struck a blow! <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's tricky. It's always so damn tricky. There's still just so much I don't know about Eren and Zeke, and because I don't have the full picture, I kind of have to look at it in the way I'm describing. You know, I kind of have to judge it by, like, how does each action feel moment to moment? And in that sense, it's just hard for me not to feel bad about, like, Eren threatening and fighting his close friends and calling Mikasa a slave, you know? I respect Keith's status for standing up. I love Levi for caring about his comrades so much. I dislike Zeke's arrogance thinking that he unilaterally has to solve everything without, you know, the discussion that he claimed to have wanted. I care about Hanji who's struggling to make the right choices given a very complex environment. I feel bad for Mikasa who, like, is confused about her own feelings. It hurts me that Armin, a sweet kid who's always been the bully, gets bullied by the same person who saved him when he was young. You know, there's like a lot a lot of things that on that level give me feeling even though I don't I don't know the full circumstances and maybe I don't need to know the full circumstances you know like I'm increasingly thinking there's a separation between the events you know and judging things by events and looking at the people and their actions and I have a feeling that no matter what the circumstances turn out to be no matter what gaps in my knowledge there are about the world my opinions are going to hold consistent about that because I'm basing it on what I feel are like strong considerate powerful choices that if widely adopted I feel probably would be pragmatic in in that other domain in the realm of consequences if that makes sense it's difficult to explain you know i've been sort of rambling on these topics a lot but that aside this was a very exciting episode the levi zeke scene is incredible like they just keep delivering with levi and zeke it's, it's one of the best pairings in my opinion this is so much fun and now we got two episodes left i think and so what happens when the Jaegerists seek out Zeke? Because I think that's what they're trying to do. So many things can happen. Very excited. But before the video ends, I got to give a very, very special thank you and very long overdue thank you to all my patrons for the support. It's been hectic recently, to say the least, because of all the moving around. And that moving around is not quite finished because I'm still going to Korea. So I deeply appreciate all the, all the patience, all the love, all the amazing comments, as always. Kind words. So thank you again. Things will eventually go back to normal and be smooth. A special shout out this week goes to those who joined the top tier on Patreon. Sirishi and Chris Choi. Thank you to you guys. Thank you to everybody for watching. Love you guys as always. See you very, very soon for what is sadly the last couple episodes of Attack on Titan.